Apple released iPad OS 16.1 and there are a few display setting changes on the iPad that I like to go over. This includes the ability to do reference mode and also fine tune calibration. I'll walk you through the process if you want to go through all this and also share with you my thoughts about this feature overall as well. Let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be doing this demo on my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This is the fifth generation running on the M1 chip. I did not update to the M2 generation because I don't feel that the changes were significant and what I have right now still functions just fine. A few things to note is that on this iPad and also the newer 12.9 inch one, these are the two iPad Pros that has the liquid retina XDR display. In Apple parlance, that is the mini LED that comes with reference mode. So what I don't know is if the 11 inch iPad Pro have these reference mode or not once you update to iPad OS 16. So do let me know in the comments below if your 11 inch one with the M1 chip or the M2 chip has these functions and capabilities or not. And if you have other iPad, please feel free to chime in as well. This way I would know. A few things to note is that when Apple released iPad OS 16, it wasn't 16.0, it was 16.1, and this is to maintain the dot number, so that is similar throughout all the other OS that Apple is releasing for the mobile devices that they have. Simply enough from here, what we're gonna do is go into system settings, and from here what I'll do is tap on display and brightness, what I can see right now is a few settings on the very bottom. So the first thing I have is display zoom. So I can certainly tap on view and this is going to give me the option now to really scale my display a little differently. You don't really have an opportunity to choose the resolution per se. What you simply have is more space, the default one, which is pretty much the one that we have been using for the longest time and larger text. This is gonna make text and icon larger on the display. A few things to notice that just by selecting more space. If you go back to the home screen, this does not rearrange the home screen in any way at all, nor do we get any more rows or columns for our icons. It's just that the icon becomes slightly smaller, text becomes slightly smaller, but there's still a lot of gaps between these icons in the exact same way. Uh, I would hope that at some point in the future or maybe the next major iPad OS release that maybe these may change. We'll see, I don't know about that, but let's go back into display setting. So let's say I want to change this to larger text. I would simply tap there and if I tap on done, now iPad's going to ask me, you want to use Zoom or if you have the default selected, it's going to say use standard. If you select these options, the iPad have to restart. So the moment you commit saying use Zoom or use standard, iPad is going to restart. What I'm going to do is cancel this out because I have this set up for more space and I like the way how my iPad look right now. The next thing that we have on the bottom is reference mode. Now, when we put this iPad into reference mode, you can see right there, it pretty much just locks everything in. The screen flickers a little bit, but this does not really give me the option to choose or customize the color space as I can do on my 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro with the Liquid Retina XDR display. That's the one with the mini LED. So with those one, I can change the different color modes. Well, I can't really do it on here. So personally, I find this is somewhat limiting. Um, it's not a bad thing to have the reference mode here, but the ability to choose the color gamut that you work in, I think that would have been fantastic. I'm not sure if this is something that Apple plans to implement in the future or not. But as far as I can tell right now, the reference mode for these iPad, it pretty much locks the display at P3 color space. Now, the other thing that we can do with this is fine-tune calibration. So I can tap on that, and I haven't done a fine-tuning yet because you can see that Restore Default is grayed out at the moment. Well, let's do some fine-tune calibration on our iPad display. I have an iPad Pro after all. So to do this, I will simply use Calibrite Color Checker Display Pro. If you have the Color Checker Display Plus or the X-Rite equivalent device, it will work in the exact same way. Or if you have an X-Rite Color Spectrophotometer. As far as software goes, we're going to use our Mac as an assistant. You don't have to have the latest Liquid Retina XDR Display Mac for this to work. Any Mac will function just fine as long as you can run Color Checker Profiler or X-Rite i1 Profiler. And they're pretty much very similar to each other. I already have Color Checker Profiler launched and I have Advanced Mode selected. What I'll simply do is go up on the top left of the screen and then choose Profiling. From there in white point, what I'm going to do is click on the drop down list, click on measure, and in that sub menu right there for white point on the screen you're seeing right now, 
click on secondary display, click on white patch. If you watch my videos on how to do white point fine tuning on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro before, this is pretty much the exact same step. The difference right now is that rather than putting this colorimeter or color spectral photometer, if you have those, on the Mac display, what I'm going to do is launch a website on Safari. And this website is pretty much going to be just a simple white throughout, just like so. And I'll put a link to this website in the description below as well. From there, what I will simply do is rotate the cover and hang the device on the display, just like that. Making sure it lays flat and light doesn't come in on the side. Go back to the Mac now and then click on measure. This is going to give us the luminance and also the white point XY coordinate for the display right now. Simply enough, just pull this aside and I would go back into the system preferences. Now, you don't want to close this lid yet because if you do, the measure device or the measured value is going to disappear. So just leave this open for the time being. So what we have right now, I'm going to enter in the white point, the X and the Y value. A couple of things is that I have my iPad set to US region. So I am going to be using periods or dot as I'm typing in these values. If you're in the European countries, for example, France and German, a lot of times comma is used instead of the period or dot in those selective regions. So just keep in mind if yours doesn't work or it doesn't allow you to go through, many times just changing that dot to a comma will really solve your problem. All right, so right now my display is measuring at 0.310. And you don't really have a type in a zero in the beginning or anything like that. And the Y coordinate is 0.325. The luminance on this is 88.841. 88.841. So this is what I was saying earlier that when you put the display into this reference mode, Apple fixed the brightness of the display, so you can't really go in and change it. For example, if I do the control center and I'm trying to change this, well, it's pretty much dismissing the control center and it won't really allow me to go in and change that value at all. This is pretty much what reference mode is, a fixed display brightness. However, what I don't appreciate about this, in addition to not being able to choose the color gamut, is that I can't really choose the luminance point I want to use. So that's one of those big downer for me. So what I'm going to do next is type in the reference X and Y coordinate for P3 at D65, and that will be 0 0.312, 3127, and for the Y will be 0 0.329. Now for the luminance, what I'm going to do is set this to 90. However, if I type in a value that's out of range, you will see that very quickly. For instance, you see that in red below right now that it gives you a specific range that you can adjust this and you can't really deviate too far from that range. So right now I'll type 90 in and I will click on done. So the moment you do that to verify if you have fine tuned calibration or not, simply come and click on fine tune calibration again. You will see in the bottom that restore default is now in blue. So you can tap on restore default and will also tell you when you did the fine tune calibration last. So this is something that you can do. I would say that this mode may be more useful, for instance, if you're doing color grading in Resolve now that's for iPad. If you're using this to do any serious Lightroom editing, I think this is a really great starting point. 90 nits is a pretty much, I would say like a good value for you to use. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, it is a good value, but it's just one of those things where I like a little bit more freedom to be able to choose a nit value that I want to specify my display at, and that's something I can't do right now. Another thing too to note when you're using display reference mode, and there is a little caution on the bottom that if you put your display in reference mode, it may drain more battery from your system. So that's also something to keep in mind as well as you put your display into this reference mode. So I hope that you find this demo and my thoughts about the reference mode on the iPad Pro running iPad OS 16.1 helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell if you're new. And you know, you trust.